All right, we're back with more great topics. Uh, this one will move on the Phoenix Coyotes. And uh, you know what? Going into the playoffs, uh, no one probably saw this coming. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't believe, unless you're a Phoenix Coyote fan and we're, you know, wishful thinking, I guess. But uh, who has impressed you the most? Uh, I think Ray Whitney has impressed me the most. Uh, he's not getting any younger, and uh, he's clutch. So That's I think true. Ray Whitney has impressed me the most. But then again, Mike Smith has been stealing games for him and uh, playing really well on back end. They're a garage sale team. Like, there are so many cast-offs on that team that nobody wanted anymore that, uh, that Phoenix has picked up. And Tippett has done just a tremendous job in Phoenix that he's got all these guys or cast-offs from all these different teams, put them together, play a simple game, but it's effective. The guy that's most impressive, you, the big guy in net, Mike Smith, well, he was on waivers from Tampa Bay. He was just basically sitting there waiting for somebody to pick him up. Nobody wanted him. Phoenix is the only team that picked him up and guess what they're doing right now with him. Yeah, I can't go wrong with that. And uh, speaking of Mike Smith, I think this has got to be the most interesting thing that's got to happen because say if he, they do go to the final or do win it, Gary Bettman, what is he going to do? <laughs> Is he going to, you know, give himself the Stanley Cup? You yeah, know, obviously, you bring down the team owners, the NHL, or the owners. What's going to be the more interesting story? Mike Smith leading Phoenix to a championship or Gary Bettman kind of uh, giving himself the, the, the Stanley Cup? You know, it's amazing what Phoenix has done because bes despite the fact they're owned by the NHL, every move they make has to be approved by the National Hockey League. That's amazing that they're doing what they're doing right now. And if the Coyotes win the Stanley Cup, are they still going to move? And is Bettman going to receive the trophy himself? Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I'm not a big Bettman fan, to be honest. Uh, I think the big story is Mike Smith, for sure. Uh, like you said, he came out of nowhere. He's stealing games right now for him, and uh, you need a good goaltender in these playoffs. It kind of makes you feel like the Winnipeg Jets old days, too. Because uh -huh. he had the white out. You know, it makes you feel, and you saw Shane Doan playing well there, too. It makes it kind of those memories of the old Winnipeg arena. And he was the last member of the Winnipeg Jets is yeah. still on that team. Moving on, let's go to the Kings and Blues. And everyone thought this was going to be a boring series. Yeah. Very defensive. You have two great goalies in Elliott and Quick who have been solid in that first round and throughout the season. Ten goals in the two games, uh, would you believe it? Uh, although Quick has held up on his own end, uh, only giving up three. Elliott uh, giving up seven, uh, a couple empty netters there. But still, um, what do you make of this series? Well, you look at LA at Christmas time, they were, they were done, they were dead. They're, the chances of them making the playoffs at Christmas time were very slim. All of a sudden, they bring this guy in from Viking called Daryl Sutter. He's finally got some discipline on his team, some hard work. And all of a sudden, the Kings have turned things around, and Jonathan Quick has just been lights out. Two interesting teams, I think. The St. Louis Blues, I really didn't see them going very far, but Ken Hitchcock has got them along. And uh, Jonathan Quick, I think, best goalie in the league. He's also stealing games. It seems like uh, they only need to score one or two goals, and they feel comfortable in the game. So uh, I think with the high-end firepower, in front with Kopitar and, and Carter, I think that they're going to come out on top. But what about another guy who's kind of been lost in this? Of course, when you think of L.A., everyone's saying the great play of Jonathan Quick. But what about Dustin Brown? Because yeah. he's been phenomenal, especially shorthanded. That's when he's been most dangerous. Um, a pair of goals and, and three assists. So you can't go wrong with him. But he certainly have to, has to be a surprise for you as well. Yeah, and he was talk of trade rumors of the trading deadline. Like everybody was talking that he was going to move out of L.A., Probably sometimes the best move you make is not the move you make. You don't make any moves, and you don't trade a player away like Dustin Brown because imagine if the L.A. Kings traded him away. Would that team be different right now in the playoffs? Uh, very well could be. Yeah, true leader on the team for sure in Dustin Brown. And uh, you mentioned scoring goals, but he's also throwing the body around. I've seen a couple big hits that he's made out there and changed the momentum in the game. And, uh, yeah, he's leading that team. And, and you look back at that Vancouver series now, everybody thought maybe Vancouver came out flat. No, L.A.'s pretty good. That's very true, and uh, also an interesting stat. We talk about Brown before he was traded, had about half a goal is what he was averaging in his first 60-some games. After that, he was averaging a little over, or a point a game, rather. Yeah, yeah. He's averaging over a point a game now and close to two uh, in the postseason. So that's, uh, he's definitely been a solid guy for the Los Angeles Kings. So let's move on to uh, two teams that have goalies that might be shipped out by the end of the, well, start of the free agency, I guess we'll say. Uh, Tim, Thomas, and... Obviously, uh, we got Roberto Luongo. Um, who will be the most successful 
uh, moving on to a new team next season? Uh, I guess that's kind of up in the air. We don't even know what's going to happen with Luongo. Uh, if, if he's going to go to the Maple Leafs, is he going to have uh, all that pressure and not be able to do well in that market? But uh, Tim Thomas is so consistent. Uh, he doesn't have the, the best style out there, but he stops the pucks, and uh, I, I look to see him have the best year. Tim Thomas is getting up in age, but at the same time, he's just got better through the years. Uh, Bobby Lou going to Toronto would be interesting because it, you go from uh, a real hot kitchen in Vancouver into the fire of the media in Toronto, and uh, I don't know Bobby Lou would really survive in Toronto. Uh, if he goes to Toronto, they're going to expect them to go win the Stanley Cup like Toronto always thinks they're going to win every year. <laughs> and Whenever they pick up a free agent, regardless of who it is, they always think they're going to win the Stanley yeah, yeah. Cup. But, uh, you know, moving on um, to you two, though, which two would you trade for? Out of the two, I should say, which one would you rather go for? i go Tim Thomas. Even though he's a little older? Tim Thomas. Yeah, yeah, you know, what he adds in that dress room, he's uh, a bit of a character. Uh, he holds guys accountable. Uh, what I've heard, he's, he's laid into some of his defensemen in Boston to the point where they don't want to talk to him. But, uh, yeah, he's a leader. I see him as being a clutch goalie, yeah, Luongo, uh, playing for Team Canada, playing in some pressure situations. I just don't see him being that guy. Uh, I'd rather see Tim Thomas be on my team. Okay, let's move on to baseball. Bryce Harper makes his debut over the weekend with the Washington Nationals. Two games, goes two for six, gets a double, a walk, and an RBI. Makes a great catch in center field and has a, a wicked arm from there as well, which, uh, you know, as a, if you're a Nats fan, it's huge. Uh, but at 19, of course, baseball can be a pressure cooker. It can eat players and chew them up, spit them out. Is he the type of guy in terms of that play? Is that promising, or do you feel that they should send him back to the minors? Well, maybe not send him back to the minors, but take your time with him. Uh, he's 19 years old. Dog days of summer will be coming up in a couple of months' time. He's going to face a lot of different pitchers between now and the end of the season. So take your time with him. Don't burn him out. Uh, you've seen a lot of young players come up with all the hype and they look great early in two or three years down the road you're trying to find him in a roster. I think he stays with the big team. Uh, there's a lot of hype behind Harper and uh, I think that he is going to be the guy for them in, in the future and uh, Bryce Harper right now is uh, a lot of hype for a 19 year old but I think he has the confidence to back it up. Uh, he doesn't look like he's shy or tentative out there, so I think that, that he's going to be great for the big team. And you know what? He's also wearing the stirrups, too. So you got to give him props, a little <laughs> old-school look. Yeah, yeah, Can't yeah. go wrong with that. All right, well, we'll move on to over-under coming up after the break. 